Water pump replacements are a common procedure that nearly every professional technician has completed at least once. So why is it that on some jobs they'll last as long as the original pump did, while others will fail often within the first year? Is it the part or the process? Stick around. That's the topic for today's edition of The Trainer. Now your customer may need a new water pump for a variety of reasons. Perhaps the impeller shaft seal failed and it's leaking coolant through the weep hole. Or the support bearing has gone bad and it's making a lot of noise. No matter the reason, during the repair process it's important to look for any factors that could have contributed to the death of the old pump or will affect the lifespan of the new one you're about to install. Before even beginning the repair, you should take the time to inspect the condition of the coolant. A visual check is not enough. The coolant can visually look pristine, but the additive package may be entirely depleted. First, is the coolant level correct? Certainly, loss of coolant due to a leaking pump is one explanation for a low coolant level. But keep in mind that low coolant levels can also allow unwanted air into the system, and this can lead to cavitation problems that could be the cause of the pump's failure. Next, test the condition of the radiator pressure cap. Don't rely on the sound of pressure being released that you might hear as you remove the cap. Be sure that you test the cap and verify that it performs as rated. Weak caps are a top cause of cavitation in the cooling system, allowing lower system pressures that enhances the chances of cavitation to occur. Testing the condition of the coolant is next on the list. Contaminated coolant, or coolant that has an improper mixture of coolant to water, are leading causes of premature water pump failure. Both of these conditions can result in accelerated wear in the impeller shaft support bearing and cause premature failure of the support shaft seal. The easiest way to test the condition of the coolant is to use a specialty test strip that will provide you with a measurement of coolant mix, coolant pH, and the reserve alkalinity present in the coolant. Coolant mixtures outside of the 40 to 60 percent range could be contributors to the old pump's demise, as could a pH level outside of the specified range. The measured acidity of the coolant is an indicator of the health of the coolant's additive package critical in protecting not only the water pump, but the entire cooling system and all its components. Now remember, the acidity level is an indication of the health of the additive package that the coolant manufacturer has placed in their product. If you find by your testing that the acidity level is well outside of norms and the coolant is nowhere near its regularly scheduled service interval, then you need to inspect for the reasons why those additives have depleted prematurely, or you're just going to be setting yourself and that new water pump up for premature failure. Some of the things that can cause premature depletion include bad vehicle electrical grounds, or even using the wrong kind of water when you're making your 50-50 mix. For more information on these aspects of cooling system testing, be sure to check out the trainer Episode number 53. Next on the list is an inspection of the accessory belt if the belt is responsible for driving the water pump. Use a belt inspection tool like this one supplied by our sponsor Daco and replace the belt if worn. Also inspect the tension of the belt. A belt that's too tight is going to accelerate the wear on the bearings on all the accessory drive components, and one that is too loose will also accelerate the wear by increasing the heat load on the system. Either way, it's bad, and both need to be corrected as part of the repair. 
Of course, if the timing belt is the source of spinning power for the pump, replacing the belt and the tensioner should be automatic as part of the service. Kits like the ones offered by Deco come with everything you need to do the job right the first time. With these preliminary checks completed, you can move forward with the pump removal. But before you toss the pump into the return bin, take a look at it for signs of cavitation, characterized by pockmarks in the pump's surface and or damage to the impeller blades. Rust deposits are a good sign that the water used in the original fill was a bad choice. If you want to make sure your job lasts, use the premixed version of the coolant to avoid issues related to water quality. There are other contaminants in the system that are harder to spot, but just as likely to be there. That's why it's important that you perform a thorough pressurized flush of the system as part of your repair. Now don't rely on just your coolant exchange machine. A good pulsing pressurized process is the most thorough way to clean the cooling system and it will go a long way to help protecting that new pump that you just installed. Heck, it's not even a bad idea if you're just performing a routine cooling system service for your customer. Now it's time to move on to pump installation. Among the leading reasons for warranty returns is the early failure of the pump's mechanical seal. And the cause of this failure? Well-meaning technicians that are spinning the impeller by hand as soon as the pump's removed from the box, checking for free rotation of the impeller. The reasoning is simple enough. The seal is dependent on the coolant mixture for lubrication. If we spin the shaft through on a dry seal, it is possible to cause some damage to the seal that we won't know about right away. But it definitely will impact just how long our water pump job lasts. If you really must turn the pump through prior to installation, submerge it first in a coolant water mix and then spin it through there. And when you install the pump and you've refilled the cooling system, make sure that you spin the pump through by hand, oh, five to 10 revolutions so that you can pre-lubricate the seal prior to engine startup. Another common installation mistake is the improper use of sealant. Never use sealant on a water pump gasket. That includes O-ring or rubber gaskets, metal elastomer, that is rubber coated or with integrated O-ring metal gaskets, and even traditional paper gaskets. And only apply a thin layer on metal gaskets when instructed to do so by the vehicle manufacturer. Excess sealant will leak out inside the pump, contaminating the coolant and possibly getting lodged in the impeller shaft bearing as well. Just remember that sealant is one area where less is certainly more. Another common mistake is actually a combination of surface prep and improper torque. All gasket sealing surfaces must be free of any old gasket material and debris and when you're installing the pump, be sure to follow the OEM's torque procedure, both the specifications for the fasteners and the order in which they should be tightened. This helps prevent any warpage of the pump body, which would put additional strain on the support shaft bearings. Well, with the new pump installed, we're just about done with our water pump repair. Pretty much the last thing on the list is to refill the cooling system. But before you do, make sure that you perform a thorough flush of the system so that you can remove as many of the contaminants there as possible. And when you're selecting your coolant, make sure that you go by the OEM specifications and use the right coolant for the vehicle that you're servicing. And if you do decide to mix your own coolant, take the water out of the equation, use the premix or distilled or deionized water, never tap water. Now, once you have the cooling system filled, be sure to give that water pump a spin. Five to ten turns is more than enough so that you can pre-lubricate the seal and avoid having any premature failures there. And last but not least, make sure that you follow the OEM recommendations for bleeding the air from the system. Even a little bit of air can give cavitation a foothold, 
and that's just going to lead to premature failure of the cooling system components. The difference between a water pump job that lasts and one that doesn't isn't that great. It's really about paying attention to the details before, during, and after the repair. If you follow the tips I share with you today, I think you'll find that your water pump jobs will last as long, if not longer, than the OE pump did. Thanks for watching.